All right, now that we know Green's theorem, let's go back and think about it, reinterpret it in the light of circulation and flux of a planar vector field. Let's think in those terms. Let's say we have a vector field, something in the form fxi plus fy j, where those i and j components of that vector field are labeled fx, fy. What happens when we apply Green's theorem to the one forms associated to this? The circulation version of Green's theorem integrates the work one form fx dx plus fy dy along the boundary of some domain d in the plane. What does Green's theorem say? Green's theorem says that that circulation is really the double integral over the interior of a certain density with respect to area. What is that? Well, using the standard form of Green's theorem and using this work one form, we get partial fy partial x minus partial fx partial y. Check it. Make sure that that's true. We were using p and q notation. Now we're using fx and fy, the work one form. But then substitute in the flux one form and you get something that looks a little bit different. If we integrate the flux one form, that is fx dy minus fy dx, integrate that over the boundary of the domain, then what does Green's theorem say? Well, you have to mind your p's and q's, but what you will get is the double integral over the interior with respect to area of the following function, partial fx partial x plus partial fy partial y. The minus signs work out that way. Now, take a look at these two right-hand sides. These, these look different. Uh, they're both really important. They are two different types of derivatives of planar vector fields. And that's what we're going to be concerned with in this chapter. Now, what do you observe about these two different densities? Well, they're kind of similar, but they're kind of, they're kind of different. They're kind of twisted. It's like you're, you're flipping an X and a Y and there's a minus sign change. What does it all mean? Well, let's take a look. Let's examine these two right-hand densities at the elemental or infinitesimal level. And let's think about what they mean. Okay, so go back to Green's theorem, take a look at those two densities, and think about what they mean in the context of a planar vector field. Okay, so consider this vector field, and let's look at that first term partial fy partial x minus partial fx partial y. This is called the curl of the vector field, and what it means is an infinitesimal space. Bin. This tells you whether at the infinitesimal level, the vector field is spinning counterclockwise, positive, or clockwise, negative. And the way to see this is to think about computing the circulation along a very small loop, a circle, and then just, just shrink that circle down to a point and look at this limiting rate of circulation. Thanks to Green's theorem, this gives you this density, this curl at a point. Now the second term likewise has an interesting meaning. This is called the divergence of the vector field. And what this is telling you at every point is an infinitesimal flux. Whether there's more stuff going out than going in, that's positive divergence, or more stuff going in than going out, that is negative divergence. Again, think in terms of a small circle and integrating this flux one form along that circle is, by Green's theorem, computing the net flux through the disk. If you look at the rate as I shrink that circle down to a point, then we get this density, this divergence, and that is telling you this limiting intensity of flux. Now, each of these has its own notation, and these notations are a little bit strange at the moment. They use this nabla or del symbol, this upside down triangle, and curl is often denoted del cross f. Divergence is often denoted del dot f. What, why is that, what is that? Well, we'll explain later, but for now, just get used to that notation, get used to these right-hand sides, and we will explore how we can use these in the context of Green's theorem.